Hey, what's up, guys? Ankle Breaker J2 here, the man with the plan, man with the mind, and the knowledge of the YWC. Before I get into my video, I'd like to say right about there, click this link here to my second channel here on YouTube. It's called Pro Nation Wrestling. I do a podcast on Podomatic. I uh, just started it. I just got done with my second episode this past week. Got to do my third episode um, probably tomorrow or Monday. Um, so go subscribe to the channel for that and also sign up upon Mac. It takes two seconds to sign up. If you got time to sit here on the computer all day, do nothing with your boring life, masturbate to fucking Eve Torres and, and Stacy Keebler, you got two seconds to masturbate and you got two seconds to sign up. You should just use your email address, your name, and a password. That's all you do. It's that simple, yes. Um... Yeah, so go subscribe to, to that channel, uh, which like I said, the link will be right there, and uh, sign up for Podomatic. Now, let me go and get into this. Um, this is a video that I wanted to do for a while, but I never actually had time to do, or I actually forgot to do. Um, earlier in my YouTube career, which was last year, around this time, as a matter of fact, um, I made a video called My Favorite Year in the WWF, which was uh, 1992. That was my favorite year. By, not, uh, by far, in my opinion, the best roster. They had, you know, like six or seven former world champions on the roster. They had, you know, it was just star after star after star after star on that roster. Now, only a few years later, just WWF really, really fucking sucked. In 1995, um, I'm gonna talk about their roster, and I'm gonna be talking about uh, their major pay-per-views. Uh, so that'll be um, Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, King of the Ring, SummerSlam, and Survivor Series. And I'll be talking about some things in between here and there as well, um, just why why it was bad uh, overall. Now, there's some good things out of the year, and I'll go through the positive points as that, but. Most of 1995 in WWF and in WCW, which I'll be mention, mentioning a little bit as well. I'll go over a couple of things in WCW as well. Why that year was, why the year 1995 in wrestling was the worst year, in my personal opinion, in wrestling history. Yeah, people say 2009, but god damn, you gotta live back then. And some, and some of these, you know, some people I do talk to on Skype. Like, you know, the Chris Phoenix, Ace the Wrestling Nut, uh, Chase Oliver, the Wrestling Guy 9, uh, unfortunately, the Cooter Chris, I talked to him. Ugh. No, I'm just kidding, but, um, they know how much I bring up 1995 as the worst year, and I, I show them video clips of s some certain things of, uh, that happened, but, enough rambling, let's get into it. 1995, we're gonna first start off with WWF, of course, and we're gonna start off with the, uh, Royal Rumble. Royal Rumble itself, 1995, um, overall, it wasn't horrible, but there were some things that kind of puzzled me about it. Uh, for instance, you had your WWF Championship match. Now, I know it was Red Hart versus Diesel, and they were trying to protect Red Hart, but they fought to a draw. It wasn't double disqualification. It wasn't, um, it wasn't double, double disqualification. It wasn't double count. They fought to a draw, which I found kind of weird. Um... Whatever. You have to protect Bret Hart. I understand that. Um, Royal, the actual Royal Rumble itself was a good Royal Rumble. It was the best two-man Royal Rumble I've ever seen in my life. Where you had Shawn Michaels coming in at one, British Bulldog coming in at two. The best two-man Royal Rumble, which I mean is the the best two-man combination in Royal Rumble history as far as going from start to finish. Great, great, great Royal Rumble Um from Shawn Michaels and the British Bulldog, one of the, one of the best. But even though it was very short, it wasn't an hour long, it was about 40 minutes. Still, it was still a great performance from both Shawn Michaels and the British Bulldog, uh, from being one and two and having Shawn Michaels win uh, when everybody thought the British Bulldog won at first, when Shawn Michaels' feet was, you know, one of his feet was touching, he was swinging the other foot. Um, great stuff from, from Shawn Michaels uh, and the British Bulldog in 1995 Royal Rumble. Um, so 1995 started off okay, um, but during a match in 1995 where you had, I believe you had the British Bulldog, and um, I'm sorry, not the British Bulldog, but you had uh, Bob Holly and the One Two Three Kid beat 
Bam Bam Bigelow and Tataka for the um, the tag team titles. Oh, God. Bam Bam Bigelow was pissed off because he was embarrassed at the end of the match. He sees Lawrence Taylor. And Lawrence Taylor's, like, clapping and laughing at him. Then, then you know, Bam Bam Bigelow pushes Lawrence Taylor. Lawrence Taylor gets upset, and the rest is history. That is your main event for WrestleMania 11. Lawrence Taylor versus Bam Bam Bigelow. Let's get into WrestleMania 11. It's the worst fucking WrestleMania of all time. Let me tell you something about WrestleMania 11. This is the most shit show you'll ever fucking see. I am being dead serious. It's one of the most shit production shows you'll ever see. First of all, you have... I'm going to go through the entire card. I'm just going to go through the entire card real quickly. Yeah, your first match, you had the Allied Powers, which was the British Bulldog, and Lex Luger, which was basically the Allied Powers was America and England, like it was in like this World War II, versus um, the Blue Brothers, which was the fucking Harris Brothers from WCW. They had this long-ass hair, a horrible match. It, it was just bad. It was a horrible match. Then you have Razor Ramon versus Jeff Jarrett for the Aaron Connell title, Overall, the match itself was, in, in ring work, it was okay, it was decent. Uh, Jeff Jarrett wasn't as good as, as he was, you know, what he became to be in uh, TNA and uh, the late years of WCW. Um, but the match was so over-fucking-booked. And let me tell you something about the very beginning of the match. Jeff Jarrett comes out, then Razor Ramon comes out, um, basically... He attacks Jeff Jarrett. The bell rings. The, the, the bell ring for the match. The match started already. He throws Jeff Jarrett out of the ring. Then his pyro went off. He had a late pyro after the match began. He did his whole little that, you know what I mean? He did all that. Just horrible. Undertaker versus King Kong Bunny. What can I say? One of the worst WrestleMania matches of all time. It ended in a damn clothesline. Undertaker did a clothesline. To King Kong Bunny, a flying clothesline. Let me let me just say that it was a flying clothesline to end the match, and he he did the rest in peace pin, like it was a tombstone or something. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. He could at least like did like a fake choke slam and have King Kong Bunny jump or something, not a fucking clothesline. Oh my god. Okay, then you have Orn Hart and Yokozuna versus um uh, the Smoking Guns. Uh, that was for the tag team titles. That was one of the bare matches on the card. Okay. Then you have a disappointing match between Bob Backlund and Bret Hart. A I quit match where you have Ryan Piper, a special guest referee, two, two years in a row in a, in a Bret Hart match. Disappointing. That's all I can really say. It was disappointing with these two tentacle, these two tentacle masters. It was very disappointing. Um, then you have Diesel versus Shawn Michaels for the WWE title, which basically was the best match of the night. Very good match. I just didn't like the ending. Um, I thought that was a little bit overbooked as well. Um, you had the right use of celebrities in this. Um, you had the right use of celebrities in this uh, matchup with Pamela Anderson and Jane McCarthy. Right use of celebrities. And uh, Diesel won. Um, but, like I said, it was kind of overbooked in my opinion, but it is what it is. Then you have your main event, which was Lawrence Taylor. LT retired from the NFL for, for for about two or three years then versus Bam Bam Bigelow. You know, one of the most athletic, underrated guys in wrestling of all time. It's not that the it's not that the fact that this match main evented well it is the fact that this match main evented. It should this should have main event your show. The match wasn't it was good for Lawrence Taylor's first wrestling match. I will say that. But the thing is, you had overuse of football players, overuse of celebrities with Saw and Pepper. I love Saw and Pepper, but you had no business being there singing out Lawrence. It's just my, it's just my opinion, in my personal opinion. You had no business being there. Then you had Nicholas Del Toro there. Then you had Jonathan Taylor Thomas. And this is, oh my God, it's so, it's overbooked with celebrities. Way overbooked with celebrities. But, and... The only thing to come out of this match was Mongo and Michael getting a rub to to want to wrestle. I mean, that's the only thing to come out of this match. Oh, that and Bam Bam Bigelow's career for from in the WWF went down the shitter. Um, but yeah, that was WrestleMania 11. Horrible. A lot of bad, you know, a lot of bad production wise. There, there's this one part where you had 
uh, in the back, you, you, you had an interview where you had Nicholas Del Toro about to interview um, Gene McCarthy. And um, basically, there was no audio. And that was in between the Razor Ramon, uh, Jeff Jarrett, and um, Undertaker King Kong Bunny match. Then after the Undertaker uh, King Kong Bunny match, they redid the segment again, and it, it worked. But, god damn, man. Horrible. Horrible. It's just horrible. <sighs> that was WrestleMania 11. King of the Ring, 1995. Um, whatever on this event. I, I mean, does this sound right? Tatanka made it. Well, Tatanka was a... How should I say? He was a uh, great talent. Um, but it this just how, let you know how bad the roster was back then. You got Diesel and Bam Bam Bigelow, which Bam Bam Bigelow was still a major star at the time. I'll, I'll give him that. Versus Tatanka and Psycho Sid in a tag team match. And Diesel was the, the, was the champion at the time, the WWE champion. So, it, whatever. Then you have Bret Hart versus Jerry Lawler and Kiss by Quit match. I actually like their feud. It's just their matches never really lived up to expectation in my in my particular opinion. Kiss by Quit match was whatever. It was it was classic for me because I remember this match. You know, growing up, I remember this match, and I was marking out. I never liked Bret Hart. I always wanted Jerry Lawler to win. That was just me. I was I was a bad little kid at a uh, seven years old. Then King Mabel or Mabel, aka Viscera, aka Big Daddy D won. The King of the Rain that year, which led to SummerSlam 1995, which was the one, which was the worst SummerSlam of all time. Maybe 2010 was uh, is up there as well, uh, and maybe 2008. But uh, God damn, 1995 was bad. The only good thing about this card, in my personal opinion, was the opening match with the One Two Three Kid and a Hakushi. Great match to open up the show. Two good high flyers going back and forth. A great match. It was only about like less than 10 minutes. I mean, they should have got at least like 12 minutes, 13 minutes. But, you know, the match had like, what, 10 matches, 11 matches on the card. Um, you had you had Bertha Faye uh, being um, Medusa Lawrence the Blaze for the women's title. Now, that's not the problem. The problem was that Harvey Rippleman wanted to be a women's wrestler after that. Whatever. Um, you had uh, Bret Hart being Isaac Yankum, aka Kane, yes, Kane, in a uh, by disqualification in a singles match, and that match took like twenty minutes. Why? Um, another and, and obviously another great thing about this about this card. Well, it's not a great thing about this card, but another positive thing on this card was the Shawn Michaels Razor Ramon uh, ladder match for the Intercontinental Title. Their second ladder match, um, I believe, is better than their first one. This SummerSlam, um, this SummerSlam match here, the, for the ladder match is better than their WrestleMania Ten ladder match, in my personal opinion. Um, it almost went thirty minutes. Great match. Then the reason why I thought this particular SummerSlam is one of the worst of all time is because of the fact that you had Kevin Nash, Diesel, which was which was very over at the time. I understand. But you have them go up against fucking King Mabel, Viscera, Big Daddy V. What are you thinking, WWF? And that is where I started to think where, where Vince Russo kind of had influences in booking decisions at the time. Because Vince Russo was there. He was there from 1993 all the way to, the, I believe, 97, 98. But you had, and the match wasn't even long. It was like eight minutes long. You had your WWF championship match to go eight minutes long where you had... Diesel versus King Mabel in one of the worst wrestling displays I've ever seen in my life. You got, you gotta watch it. You gotta watch if you got, if you got, you know, less than ten minutes to spare. Watch this fucking match. It's fucking horrible. Diesel beats King Mabel. It's horrible. It's a horrible match. Horrible SummerSlam. Only there was only two good things come out of it, which was the the ladder match and the opening match. And then, you know, you got you go one month later. Shawn Michaels was the Intercontinental Champion. He was destined. It looks like you could tell he was destined to be that next that next guy in WWE. And then you have well, let's take Shawn Michaels and Diesel, who are good friends. You know, who are good friends. They had their little thing in 1994, 93, where that was Shawn Michaels' bodyguard, Diesel. Let's combine those two together, and let's call them the Dudes with Attitudes, 
And let's have them go up against Yokozuna and the British Bulldog for okay for the WWF Tag Team. Okay, basically Shawn Michaels it was the Intercontinental Champion. If Yokozuna or British Bulldog pins um, either one or of Diesel and Shawn Michaels, they will win the Intercontinental title. But if Diesel and Fuck, if Diesel and Shawn Michaels wins, then they will win the, the tag team titles, which was fucking horrible. But at the end of the day, they did win the tag team titles because um, it all been very confusing if you see British Bulldog pins Diesel, then it's like, now what? Does the, is the Diesel does Diesel lose his fucking uh, tag team or his WWF title to Yokozuna or, or to British Bulldog? See, I'm confusing myself. I don't even know. It was so confusing. It was Russo. Russo had to book that match. Russo had to book that match. Um, but it made it less confusing. They had Diesel and Shawn Michaels win. But that was so fucking confusing. Why did they do that? Okay, Survivor Series 1995. Okay, now, Survivor Series 1995 wasn't that much of a bad show. I, all, I actually thought Bret Hart and Diesel was a great, uh, actually underrated, um, no disqualification. It was a no disqualification match for the uh, WWF Championship. Um, Survivor Series 1995, though, um, I don't know. It's just something about this show that just, I just didn't like either. I guess, uh, really, really, it was the, the opening match that really not made me care about it. The opening match and the uh, second match as well, uh, which was, uh, I'm not going to go through the names, but you, you can look at the card there and you'll see why. You'll just look at the names and it's like, what, why, 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 why? So, yeah, um, you know. Basically, this made basically this was the burial of Bam Bam Bigelow and the and the uh, basically the beginning of Gold Dust, which Gold Dust came in at the end of nineteen ninety five. So, um, it was good for Gold Dust, good for uh, good for Gold Dust uh, to get get his uh, you know his uh, major start. He didn't debut at Survivor Series, but he got his uh, big first win at at Survivor Series ninety five. So. Um, I can't really say much about Survivor Series 1995. It's just, it's in the middle. It's not great. It's, it's not great. It's not horribly bad. It's just, you know, a below average to average or whatnot. So, that was WWF 1995. Now, I'm going to briefly go over WCW 1995 because I don't think, it's not like, I don't think you guys care. Well, you guys should care, but it's just, there's really, there's really three things I want to say about WCW 1995. First of all, uncensored 1995. Uncensored 1995. First of all, you had a match, which was the Blacktop Bully versus Dustin Rhodes. Uh, ironically, I go from Go Dust to, to Natural Dustin Rhodes. Yes, Dustin Rhodes, uh, the Natural, um, was in WCW at the beginning of 1995. This was in uncensored was like usually in March, so I think this was in March or maybe April, but I'm thinking it's March. You had a match where you had Dustin Rhodes versus the Blacktop Bully and a back of a semi truck full of hay, and it was called the King of the Road match. The match was in the back of a semi truck. They wrestled in a semi truck. Oh my God, Lord Jesus Christ. That has to be in the Are You Serious in WWE Are You Serious? You know, I might send that to him. You know, guys, you know, let, let's all pitch in and send this video to WWE Are You Serious so the Road Dog can just make fun of this match. It's called The King of the Road Match, The Natural Dustin Rhodes versus The Black Top Bully. Look it up. You will love it. Um, but yeah, yeah, that match was bad at Us uh, 1995. And also, to me, in the Ventha show, you had Hulk Hogan versus Vader in a letter strap match. It wasn't, oh, Lord. The only thing was about it was Hulk Hogan defeated Vader in the strap match, but the WCW heavyweight title was not on the line. If the WCW title is not on the line, have Vader win. No, you have fucking Hulk Hogan win. Yes, Hulk Hogan always won, and he was politicking. Yeah, we know that about Hulk Hogan. But have Vader win if the WCW title's not on the line? Then why have the title if you're not going to put the title on the line? And, 
I'm just frustrated. I'm just frustrated with WCW in 1995. I was very frustrated. Even though I loved WCW to death, I was very frustrated. Okay. And two more things. First, you had a guy that came into WCW called the Renegade. The Renegade was basically a knockoff version of the Ultimate Warrior. He had the face paint. He had the music. He was shaking the ropes. and He couldn't wrestle a lick. Imagine, a lot of people say the Ultimate Warrior was bad. Imagine the, Rene imagine the Ultimate Warrior's um, skill level in the ring. Minus 17,000. Like, it was, he was bad in the ring. He had a good look, you know, when I get the muscles on that. But, oh my god. You call him the Renegade. And people for a while, even myself, because this is 1995, I was seven years old. I was a mark. I actually believe that was the Ultimate Warrior, but you know, obviously he had to change his name because he couldn't be Ultimate Warrior in the in the WWF at the time. But fuck me, fuck me hard with a teaspoon in my asshole. Fuck, <sighs> horrible. Now, to close this video, I want to talk about one of the worst things I've ever seen in wrestling history. Halloween Havoc, nineteen ninety five. And some of you guys know where I'm going with this. Oh my god. Okay. You had a... Basically a monster truck battle. And they were in... Um, they were in Detroit. Okay, they were in Detroit. And... Um, basically, I believe they were... I don't know if they were on top of Joe... They were on top of some, some building in Detroit. I don't know what it was. They were on top of some building in Detroit. Basically, oh my god, I can't even talk about this. Basically, Hulk Hogan and the Giant, at the, which was known at the time, a.k.a. the Big Show, which was known as the Giant at the time, was having a monster truck battle. Two monster trucks, you know, they push each other to the cones, whatever, who cares, right? After it ended, Hulk Hogan was already out of the monster truck. For, for some reason, he was already out of the monster truck. Big Show gets out. Big Show runs down Hulk Hogan to the to the edge of the to the edge of the roof of the building. They're fighting. They get on top of the ledge. Hulk Hogan basically pushes the giant off the off the edge of the building, and oh my god! Basically, the Big Show or the giant at the time was supposed to be dead. Was supposed to be dead, right? He was supposed to be dead. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, horrible. He was supposed to be dead. And uh, basically, later that night, later that night, because you, you the next match was Randy Savage versus uh, Lex Luger, and, and the match was only like not even five minutes, ten minutes long. It was very short. So not even five minutes later, you had Hulk Hogan come out to face the giant who eventually came out, and Hulk Hogan's face was, like, shocked. He's like, oh, I thought you died. Oh, my God, it was so horrible. So, basically, the giant was supposed to be dead, only to come back, you know, literally a few minutes later to win the WCW title. Thank you, WCW 1995. Thank you, thank you Wrestling 1995, for short, for giving me all these bad clips. It's, it was just a horrible, 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 horrible Horrible year in wrestling. A lot of people say 2009. A lot of people say, you know, um, you know, 2008 or 2010 or wherever, wherever, wherever PG year you want to pick. But 1995 was just horrible. I'm sorry. It, it, from top to bottom, it, it was just bad. Something like it. And like I said in this video, there were some positive things in there, but just the majority of it was bad. All right, guys. Um, I'm going to get out of here. Uh, please rate. Please subscribe. Please drop a comment. Subscribe to new channel there, somewhere there, uh, around there. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later. You guys have a great week coming up. Oh, yeah. Spurs beat the Lakers two times this week. Yes, we lost our first game against the Lakers, but you know what? We won two in a row. Suck my fucking dick, wrestling guy.